Good evening, Jeff Michael here on Sports with Balls, welcoming in again, Rachel Von Aranjo. What it do? What is going on? My favorite show of the week. You know, just living the dream, man, here with you. How about sports in a bar? Like, does it get better than that? Yeah, I mean, not really. We get to have a good time, man. The place is pretty busy. I just had a turkey burger here. By the way, we're sitting down here at Christian Tailgate, 2000 Bagby. If y'all are hungry, y'all want to listen to sports, come join us. We're going to be here. Uh, for the next hour, tracing up some sports, and man, do I have my opinion on some stuff tonight. Ooh, I'm ready. Uh, that Baseball Hall of Fame. Mm. Are you heated? I am heated. And you know, I thought about doing a video last night, too, <coughs> while we were sitting there, or while I was sitting there watching it, and I, I, I didn't, because I like to digest my reaction before I actually, you know, get crunk on it, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, man, uh, we've got a lot coming up on the show, man. Again, we're sitting down here at Christian Tailgate 2000 Bagby. Uh, we're going to get to Rachel and her best this past weekend and the games and see how that all fared out. But first of all, a couple of sponsors to get to. Today's show brought to you by Brian White. If you, When you're injured for any reason and need real results from a real attorney, call attorney Brian White. Motorcycle accidents, 18-wheeler accidents, whatever. This guy has the best phone number in the business, 713 713- 500 5000 that's 713 500 5000 also <coughs> my man Corey Fitz over at Fitz Roofing they just put my roof on this past week they did it in one day you didn't have one before well <laughs> yeah <laughs> i did how I does did. that work but i had some i had some wind <coughs> wind and hail damage but they put it on in one day and it's not a small roof and then i have a little shed in the back uh-huh and well, i have i have a uh, i hang up a heavy bag, and I, I do some weight training in there and stuff like that. I fill it. I do the Rocky style with the gasoline tank, the, ga- the yeah. gas, and put water in them. <laughs> and uh, who's the man? So they put a new roof on my shed, and then put rig vents on the top. I, I just shocked, man. Over like above and beyond. Fitz Roofing. It's eight three two five two one three thousand eleven. F I T Z Roofing dot com. My boy Corey Fitz. Bad ass over there. <coughs> Welcome into Sports with Balls, y'all. Jeff Michael here. Rachel Von Aranja. Cannot wait to get to all of this stuff that we have going on. How was your week? My week's been great. Man, I've, I've been actually been excited to come do this show with you today. Ooh. It's the first show of the week out of all the shows that I do for me on Wednesdays. And just the weekend of football that we just experienced yeah. was sports gasmic. And I'm so happy that I get to stay here and talk <coughs> about it with you. Sports gasmic, I love Sports it. Sports gasm. All right, yep. get, cue up that music, man. Let's get the show going again. Let's party. Welcome into Sports with Balls. Again, I'm Jeff Michael here with Rachel Von Arange. And I absolutely love the word that you just used for this past weekend in sports. Yep. Sports gasmic? Sports gasm, sports gasmic. That is awesome. I mean, it's the best, honestly. It was. <laughs> Look, <coughs> this past weekend of football, uh, I, uh, people can't get enough of it. People can't get enough of Aaron Rodgers. I, I myself, am a little bit over like let's just wait to hear what he says i'm, I'm over the whole aaron Rodgers thing like uh, you know enough of it but the playoff game first off i'm sure everybody wants to know how'd you do this past weekend mm. i did great um the bets that i was the most confident about the ones that like the three that i do on my tv show that i give out the people i think they gave out four last weekend yeah not so good it was either two of two or uh one of three but my own personal bets kind of the last minute gut decision bets that i made let me just tell you, wild, wild card weekend, I hit a plus 500 bet that Elijah Mitchell would lead all running backs in wild card weekend in rushing yards. Wow, that's, a, that's an interesting bet. Then, then I get uh, this weekend, I hit a plus 400 bet that Derrick Henry, Henry, I can't speak, that Derrick Henry would be the first touchdown scorer. And guess what he did? He scored the first touchdown in that game. Boom. There you go. Yeah. Man, people need to pay attention. What's your Twitter handle? Oh, I think it's down there. I think yeah. our, our producer over there, Jason, hooks us up, puts a little follow. Uh, follow us on all these sites, man. Uh, if you're looking at them and if you're uh, listening in, mine is Jeff Michael underscore 422 uh, or Sports with Ball. 
<laughs> Somebody had sports with balls already on Twitter. Some Lance Armstrong mm, over here. Piss me off. Sports with <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Sports with balls. Jason actually gave us a good bet. This uh, uh, top 10 sports uh, sports center clip. Uh, they won, uh, and he, he put $100 on it. He won 100 bucks. So on Wednesdays, if you're down to gamble this weekend, listen to us here on Sports with Balls. Okay, I, I, man, I'm going to go ahead and bring it up. I'm glad some people are watching, all of y'all paying attention on Twitter, uh, Facebook, Twitch, uh, all of our sites, YouTube. Man, I'm pissed off. Okay, I am what's got livid. you mad? Give us your uh, get off my lawn rant moment. Yesterday. Get off my lawn, Ram. Yesterday, David Ortiz was the only member of the 27 people uh, that were listed on the Hall of Fame ballot to get into the Hall of Fame. Leaving out Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens at 66 and 67 uh, percent, respectively, and you need 75 to get in. On their last, uh, this is this is their 10th year. Now, I'm going to get into this in a minute, but they still have another chance to get in, but that one's even harder. This is. This is obnoxious. The, the Hall of Fame keeps records. It's a museum. It's a museum for, for the record mm -hmm. setters and holders, and that's exactly what it's for. How do you have a museum for Major League Baseball and leave out the, 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 maybe the top three best hitter of all time and then top five pitcher of all time? Yeah. You're talking about uh, A. Rod and Clemens? No, I'm talking about Bonds. Bonds. Oh, and Bonds. Yeah, sorry. Barry Bonds. Um, uh, it's just this guy won seven MVP awards. The next closest is three, seven MVP awards. I've got a bunch of stats on it, and I'm sure everybody does. And this is a a much heated uh, you know debate. But you've got Pete Rose is not in there, the all time hit leader. Barry Bonds, the all time home re home run leader, and the Cy Young leader and Roger Clemens, all not in the Baseball Hall of Fame, which is a museum for baseball. Yeah, no, it is, and for me, uh, it's irritating just because the lack of consistency. Um, yes. You know, it's I don't understand why Poppy gets in and the other dudes that use steroids didn't. There, that's a whole argument itself. Then there's a dude like Kurt Schilling, right? If you want to, if if we're talking about like players that affected the game in ways that are unhuman, right? Just no one else did it. Like, why isn't Kurt Schilling in there? He's in. He's not in there because a bunch of journalists don't like the stuff that he says. Most of the reasons why he's not in there is because of what he did after his career ended, right? Yes, yes. But if you talk about his career on the, on the baseball field, like it makes no sense why he's not in it. Um, Barry Bonds, 14-time All-Star, 7 times NL MVP, 8-time Gold Glove, 12-time Silver Slugger, Me, uh, home run, uh, career Major League leader in home runs, career Major League leader in walks. Now, one year he had so many, he outdid the entire Tampa Bay Rays roster. He got walked so many times. Single season leader in home runs, uh, only player with 500 home runs and 500 stolen bases. You hit on a good note a second ago. The reason that Barry Bonds Roger Clemens and Kurt Schilling are not in the Hall of Fame is because they weren't media friendly. Yeah. And these are a bunch of old head writers that are like, ah, oh, no, we don't want to. Because you have guys already in there, including David Ortiz, that had tested positive in 2004 for PEDs. And now you've got uh, – you either let in all or don't let in any. Right. What, why do you get this – and this, this is what goes to your point about how they – it's the media that don't like them. It's those old writers that – are yeah. not fans of theirs because Barry Bonds, you know, wasn't very media friendly. And I mean, it, this is ridiculous that these two guys, and I'm speaking specifically on, on Clemens and Bonds, are not in the Hall of Fame. It is, it is an atrocity. It, it, it really, this is a bad stain on baseball. It is a bad stain. I mean, it's a bad stain in one sense, but kind of like I always talk whenever people want to fight me about the MVP award every year of, of, you know, whether it's the NBA, whether it's the NFL. Like, yes, it is a stain on the integrity and the idea of what we want to believe a Hall of Fame is. Yes. But at the end of the day, we haven't talked about baseball this much no. in the country as we are right now. The controversy in, in flaring up people's uh, emotions on something is always good for business, uh, whether it's it. negative or positive. <laughs> so, I mean, they're getting talked about right now. Uh, look, I went to school for mass communications. 
Um, a lot of journalism classes. I'm by no means a journalist, never have claimed to be, I'm not a reporter, not a journalist, whatever. But my point is, is that one of the main fundamental values in these classes that they talk about and they teach you about and that whenever you're uh, you're entering with with somebody they the old journalist that's you know journalistic integrity is huge yes, right yeah. it's huge the fact that it is journalists making this vote goes against the key fundamentals I key fundamental ideas of journalism like they should not be making this vote no and this is where this report is on the <laughs> game don't don't be a part of it just like we don't want refs like yeah. inserting their foot into the game like this is it's stupid that well, they, they vote. They, well, and it's the thing, going to that point, it's the, it's the point is that these writers think that they know who did steroids. Everybody you, did them. You don't know. They had no clue. Don't give me this Mitchell Report crap. They only have, in the Mitchell Report, there's only four or five teams. And mm -hmm. it's all like the Northeast. And, and like, I mean, it's there's only four or five teams. They didn't investigate all major league teams. The Mitchell Report, and it's already come out that there's so many things in that report that are ridiculous. So throw that out the window. Another fact, Barry Bonds before the year of 2000, which I think all these writers agree that the year 2000 is the steroid era. He was a Hall of Famer before the year 2000. Right. So I don't care if you put a, an asterisk on Barry Bonds after, uh, after the year 2000, however you want to do it. But the fact that these writers think that they know who took steroids, no, you don't. You know, everybody does. Eric Gagne for the Los Angeles Dodgers was a number four starter and a really bad one at that. The next year... He turned into one of the greatest relievers of all time. Uh, <laughs> they upped that spin rate? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> uh, okay. I mean, look, if you want to talk about the, the, journal, the journalist and how they're doing things, are you not voting Aaron Rodgers in now to the, to the Football Hall of Fame because uh, you don't like the way what Aaron Rodgers says? Is Terrell Owens in yet? I mean, don't they do this? It's, uh, it is yeah. kind of a popularity contest. Sure. It is kind of – but, like, the NFL – um, I think that there's a different like percentage of votes and stuff like I, I don't really re I don't even remember how they ration this stuff but like th with baseball specifically it just really irks me that it's just nothing but journalists is they, that how it is in the in the in the NFL as well no they've got all sorts of different that's ones what I thought that, yeah it, yeah it's it's, the, the, it's these journalists and it's it's so frustrating because why are these guys making the call now. There's another way that they can get in. Um, I forgot exactly what it is, but uh, the writers have to – it's not the writers. It's the – man, I want to say it's the old – I'll find it in a minute. I have it down here. Um, but, like, the bottom line is this is a, this is a museum for baseball, mm -hmm. and they don't have Pete Rose, Barry Bonds, and Roger Clemens in. That, yeah. that if you have a museum of baseball and and everything gets wiped out and that and those three are not like people visit the like aliens come here or whatever yeah you don't know who Barry Bonds was Roger Clemens like yeah I mean, that is absolutely ridiculous and unheard of and it's everybody in that era used steroids everyone it, or performing enhancing drugs whatever you want to call it and they just let in. David Ortiz, mm -hmm. who tested positive for PEDs. It was a false. It was a false positive. Yeah, I, I just mind blowing. <laughs> Look, you're okay with the CDC putting. Uh, you know, everybody's got to wear a mask. Everybody wear a mask. Uh, then guess what? CDC comes back now and says, Ah, we were wrong. The writers, you're wrong. You got this wrong. Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens deserve to be in the hall. They have one more chance. And I think it's uh, they've got to get 12 out of 16 votes by former. Uh, I think they're Hall of Famers. Uh, I forgot. I'll look up. I'll look it up in a second. But they do have one more chance to get in. And I hope that there's a big enough uproar where these guys get in the Hall of Fame. I don't give a damn if you put an asterisk by it and say uh, suspected PED use, whatever, man. <laughs> like, like, come on, dude. But don't let in PED users and not let them in. David Ortiz was a PED user. Right. No, you have to be consistent about it. That is what I don't. I it, it just it, it blew my mind whenever I heard this, and I totally get why everybody's up in arms about it. It's stupid. It's popularity contest. Ortiz is likable. He's all friendly with everybody in the media right now. You know, he's one of the most popular faces you see on TV, especially during the playoffs. Whenever they're they're doing the yeah. live broadcast at the stadium. And it's what he's likable. He's likable. That's why he's in. It no, you know what? It's because he's overweight. Everybody likes so jolly, weird. jolly, jolly. Why can't I talk today? Jolly. Everybody likes a jolly fat man. That is likable. Dude. And, and but you just, have baby green eyes over here, like A-Rod or some of the other dudes. You know, yeah, A-Rod's all over the TV. And look, he only got 36% A-Rod's first year in the ballot. And, uh, I, it's just, it's, oh, by the way, it's called the Veterans Committee that'll vote. And you need 12 out of 16, 17%. 
man, uh, please vote these two guys in. I mean, I understand Schilling. He didn't have close to the amount of votes that, that Bonds and Clemens. And, of course, if you're going to do an all-time favorite, Clemens is a, a – uh, all-time list. Clemens is above Schilling. Some people would even agree that Clemens is top three pitcher of all time. You know, he, he leads the majors in Cy Young awards. Barry Bonds, though, that is a no doubt Hall of Fame guy. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe all three of them are no some, doubt. Some, some in my opinion, some people say he's the best baseball player ever. If not top three, it's not really arguable. Yeah. And then uh, it's just unbelievable that these writers let in David Ortiz because he is jolly, happy. Yeah. Fun, yeah. You wouldn't like Santa guy. if he was ripped and buff and yeah. beautiful. What if would Santa you? never talked to anybody? Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> you're not what like if he was like, I'm just here so I don't get fined? <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's 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 a travesty. It was very very upsetting because they had uh, about halfway through the day they had enough votes, and then as time went on, they got lowered down to 67 and 66 percent. And when the when the guy got up there and announced that it was David Ortiz, the only guy making it in, I was like, that is just. BS. That's the biggest BS. I, I, I just cannot understand. Even all the announcers, every one of them were like, yeah, you know, yes, they deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. They've paid their their nine-year due of not getting in. Right. They realize, like, okay, wow, you know, they because if it wasn't for that, Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens are both first ballot Hall of Famers, no doubt. So they paid their nine years. This was their tenth year. Let them in the Hall. Yeah, no, they deserve to be in for sure. Now it's so up to I wish I could argue veterans, with you for banter's sake, but I can, <laughs> I cannot, I cannot. Yeah, I mean, sorry, man. I just I, that I, I that really I was gonna make a video last night on it, and I was like, man, let me just should have done it. Let me just wait till sports with balls, and let me get out my anger. I just, man, I loved watching uh, Barry Bonds uh, growing up and uh, Roger Clemens and the way they pitch. And the whole thing is, is that what they did after in, in their later years, and that's what they're blaming PEDs on. PEDs on, right? Like. Uh, Roger Clemens won two Cy Youngs after the age of 40. And Bonds did a bunch of stuff after the age of, like, 37, 38. Man, fine. Take away two Cy Youngs from Clemens. Take away, like, I don't care if you take away five MVPs from Bonds. He's still killing everybody. I, you know, how come you're not docking his records, but you're not going to put him in the hall? Yeah. Barry Bonds still hit all those home runs. And you can't tell me that pitchers didn't. Yes, they did. I just gave you one example with Eric Gagne. They won't let Roger Clemens in. So C Clemens is the only pitcher doing PDs? Clearly not. You're full we of, wouldn't be angry right now. <laughs> you're full of whatever. And that's what makes me mad is the writers, they actually think that they know who did steroids. No, you don't. You have no clue who did it. You don't. And it's. I'm more irritated about just the inconsistency here. You either let them all in. Because we know damn well that that's what's holding these guys back. You either let them all in yeah. or you keep them all out. I can live with that. That's my point. Yeah. It's, it's irritating, but I can live with it if you want to keep them all out. But one or the other, one or the other. It's stupid. Like, you suppose these people, are their votes public? I know in yeah. some leagues the they votes are, are public. I yeah, I need to go uh, make a list. Well, like I said, you know, halfway through uh, when it was like 58, 60 percent of the votes were in, they were they were above 75. And I was like, man, please keep going. And uh, sure enough, they didn't. In fact, it's it's on one of the televisions right now. And I'm the, uh, like, it angers me. Like, I'm like, you got I, I don't I just don't understand how you don't let those guys in, man. And, and don't give me Sammy Sosa. Maybe you can argue Mark <laughs> McGuire. That but guy. I mean, dude, like. Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens and Kurt Schilling all deserve the Hall of Fame. Like. No, not even a doubt about it. I, I hate oh, cheaters. Well, then, listen, if that's the case, rip out. If, if you're considering what other steroid area is, 2000 to, what, 2010? They don't take the Yankees championships yeah, away. Yeah, so just take them all out. Like Red you Sox. said, consistency. If, if, you, yeah. if you're not going to count all those records and you, you're you going to call it the steroid era, either let them in or don't. But, I mean, like, it, it, like you said, the inconsistency is mind-blowing. David Ortiz tested positive, was suspended for PED use. Yeah. And now he's the face of baseball. Yeah, and now, and now he's in the in Hall of Fame. He's got a, a, a picture last night of him with, with Martinez, Pedro Martinez behind him, and they're having a blast. And meanwhile, Roger Clemens has to put out a note that says, hey, look, you know, God, me and my family are over this. And, blah, and they've had to go through hell and high water. But David Ortiz, like you said, face of baseball, even though he used PEDs. And so is A-Rod. A Rod's the one that the whole yeah. Mitchell report was pretty much based upon, and he lied to the uh, federal, uh, the FBI, basically. But he's the face of TV. Yeah, no, absolutely. He's all over the uh, the World Series in baseball. He is absolutely all over it, and he's all over paparazzi. You know, you know who's he dating this week? Um, but you no. won't let him in the hall. Nope. I mean, and Big Poppy, like, not to be conspiracy theorists or anything, but like, 
it could, it is conceivable that there are like some gang related ties there. I mean, the yeah. dude just got shot up in the Dominican yeah. Republic not not yeah. that long ago. Like Glad he lived, said, but just like you said, though, because he's jolly and he's happy, yep. it's like ah, oh, well, he deserves to get in, but not Bonds or Clemens. Yeah, uh, whatever, man. It's a joke. It's and all about being likable. I, I believe that. I, I think everybody believed that this was year ten that they would get in. This is year 10. They've waited long enough. They should get in. It's the limit, right? Yeah, 10. And now it's up to the Veterans Committee. So that comes later on this year. And I think everybody thought that they waited their time. And at least Clemens and Bonds would get in. I don't know about Schilling. But, man, it came up that they didn't. And David Ortiz was the only one. And it was just. And Ortiz is the only one getting in. It's his first year on the ballot. Like, that's the. First At least make him wait his dues. Make him wait 10 years. Like everybody else. Unbelievable, man. But all right. <laughs> there goes my 20-minute rant on baseball. I'm here for it. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. Uh, as far as the MLPA and MLB uh, coming up with a an agreement, it looks like they've made strides towards that while we're on the baseball subject. And uh, they had another meeting today, and it looks like we will have a nice spring training. We will get to pitchers and catchers reporting. So that's very good news for us and for all the baseball fans out there. So. Get ready for baseball here coming up. And, look, man, all I can say is it's a museum. They deserve to be in. And I hope the Veterans Committee, they need 12 out of 16 votes in the Veterans Committee. And I hope that all the uproar that that they finally get in. Yeah, I mean, it's the age of social media. It's the age of groupthink and angry Twitter mobs and everything. They actually do make big businesses, big corporations make decisions. They do. People do have a huge influence. Uproar on social media and stuff, everybody has a voice now. So, I, you know, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen very soon. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's I, I don't ever really get that fired up. But that, <laughs> that subject got me, like, fired up, man. All right, y'all, uh, let's move on to some football news. Um, all you people that thought Sean Payton was heading to the Dallas Cowboys, <laughs> which means I was involved. But last year I thought he would have done it. Um, hold your horses. It's not happening yet. Yeah, yeah, he's going to TV. It's it's one hundred percent done. And the rumor is that he's going to replace. Listen up, Cowboy fans. Troy Aikman at Fox. Why can't they just do it together? I feel like I'm, I'm sorry. Other than Tony Romo, I don't care what. I love Romo. Athlete, <laughs> coach, whoever you put in there, nobody makes me want to watch it because yep. they're on it. I don't care. I I like Tony Romo. I like watching games that he calls. Other than that, like they're all interchangeable to me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And so just let them both. I, I, Why not? I, apparently, everybody's like, "Oh, Sean Payton's going to be great in the booth," and he just he wants to take a couple of years off, uh, unless Jerry Jones and comes up with something crazy, which I doubt it. Uh, all all signs point towards him at least taking a year or two off and getting up in the booth. He already said that he would. He's going to come back to coaching. He just doesn't know when. He wants. Of course, to, he is. Yeah. He's going to take one year off, do TV, spend a lot of time in Cabo. Apparently, he likes to be in Cabo a lot. And, um, yeah, he was tan. Did you see him in that interview today? Yeah, he's always oh, tan me. as hell. I mean, he just got newly married, some hot young Did one. he? <laughs> yeah. Dude. I didn't even know that. So uh, I don't yeah. like Sean Payton. He I, is flash. You know, and I'm glad you said that. I'm so uh, – I Falcons fan what here. Has he, what has he accomplished? Um, now, look, there's two plays in the NFL that, that stand out to me versus the Rams, the pass interference, the no call, and then, of course, the Minnesota miracle. That, that the Rams got absolutely hosed on. Both of those, <laughs> both of those were absolutely ridiculous. But – other than win one Super Bowl with with a top ten quarterback, he, I think that he should have done more in New Orleans. Uh, no argument from me there that he should have done more, especially all those years that Tom Brady wasn't there. Yeah, uh, you know, and um, it's I mean I, Cam Newton was good, but I mean I just, I don't know I'm super biased. Yeah, don't you know? Don't look <laughs> at me for an unbiased opinion on this. But I absolutely, I, I think that uh, we're in the majority here whenever we say that he could have, should have, would have done more. But what do I remember Sean Payton for? A couple things. And they're actually not Super Bowls. I, I guess maybe when you tie in what it did for the city of New Orleans when after Katrina to win one, yeah. that was actually probably a bigger deal than the actual ring itself. Yes. But with that being said, I remember um, Vicodin. I remember um, a, a scandal. I remember, <laughs> <Bike it>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. I vaguely remember like opiate abuse or something, and then I remember uh, pen, uh, Bounty Gate. I remember Bounty Gate. Bounty Gate. And then I remember him going like this to the Falcons, choke, yep. choke. That's what I remember Sean Payton for. It's not anything spectacular. It's been kind of underwhelming. Like he had a Hall of Fame. 
first ballot Hall of Fame quarterback, some stellar defenses, really good running backs. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I, I, don't I, know. I, I, I'm glad you said the, the quarterback thing because when I think Sean Payton, I think Drew Brees. I don't think Sean Payton stand, yeah. stands alone you know, on the coaching carousel. I don't think he stands up at the at the mountaintop with all the other greats. Uh, Jimmy Johnson's better. Uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of uh, Mike McCarthy and him are on the same page. I think, and I don't think that they have to be. Yeah, I don't even think that highly of Mike McCarthy, as we all know. So, uh, Sean Payton, I don't think is some highly sought after head coach, and I don't think if you're if you're a team and you get him, he needs to have a great quarterback. We know that, and probably a great running back. But I, I don't put him on the mountaintop as some, like, incredibly gifted head coach. Like, I just don't. He's not. I think more of his legacy will be about uh, – it was during his era, during his time, at least as far as I can remember, during his time that he brought the Saints became a relevant team. Because uh, I'm pretty sure that before – correct me if I'm wrong, but before Drew Brees got there – they were pretty irrelevant. I mean, there's all these old pictures I see of just Saints fans with bags over their heads yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They they were nothing. But now that that franchise is ingratiated in that community. Saints fans are the most annoying fan base, in my opinion, uh, probably of all, next to Philly. But they are very passionate about their team, their city. Like it's all it's all intertwined, you know. If we're airing in, in New Orleans and Philly, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, she just look. Uh, Rachel's massive. I'm a fan. Massive. Uh, uh, Atlanta Falcons fan, and um, obviously it shows. Look, Sean Payton said, here's his quote, I still have visions for doing things in football, and I'll be honest mm -hmm. with you, that might be coaching again at some point. I don't think this year that's not where my heart is right now. He's taking some time off to go do what he wants to go do, and, and look, why would he come back? That, that team's going to be really, really iffy next year. I, why would he want to come back? They're a 500 team at best. and I, that's, it's a long I don't know. Rule. Tom Brady might be gone. I, if, I would have waited to see if Tom Brady's gone or not. Because you might be able to do something like, I love you, Matt Ryan. Um, love you, Falcons. But we're nothing to be scared of, you know. It's and crazy. Tom Brady. He led the league in passing yards. And by the way, incredible stat. In 56 seasons, the regular season passing leader has never won the Super Bowl. Really? That's crazy, right? Yeah. You, you would think that. I mean, Tom Brady led the league in passing this year. And we don't know if he's coming back. But That might be a sign of, of your deficiency of a lack of a running game. Honestly, that may be there may be some correlation there. Like, sure, pass for all these yards, but are you winning a ring if you have to do that? Probably not. You're really not a balanced offense. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, I, I would guess too. I mean, a lot of or your uh, defense sucks. Yeah, I mean, look, we're we moved on now in football to the the Sean McVay era, and you know, these these offensive minded coaches that are just you know banging it out now. I mean, we just saw the most incredible football game maybe in NFL history this past weekend. And Definitely postseason history. Yeah, the whole weekend was just absolutely insane. Uh, but Sean Payton, sticking on that with just for a second, he is going to go to the booth, and the rumor is him replacing Troy Aikman, which I agree with you kind of on that where I don't really give a crap who's in the booth. I don't care. Is it John Gruden? Is it Tony Romo? If not, I don't care. And I, But I think that they are looking for a John Madden-ish person, you know, that will say, okay, Madden's doing that game. I'm going to watch that game. And – yeah, that comes with chemistry, and that, that that's hard. That's really, really hard to find. I don't know if Sean Payton's on John Madden level, but, uh, you know, I would love to have another Madden around they eventually. They tried to force Jason Witten in there, and it was pretty much a train wreck. And, yeah. like, they you, just they just feel like you can plug and play, plug and play, and it's just not. Jason Witten, that was a, just a disaster of a, of a It was try. not a hit with the fans. It was not a no, hit. But. No, Now they have, uh, what's his name from the Panthers, the tight end, uh, Greg Olson. In oh there, yeah, and uh, I, I'm not a big fan. Not a, I. I tell you what, like during his career, because I, I'm not big on the Cowboys. I did not like Tony Romo on the field. I thought he was a little bit of a choke artist and never won the big game for the Cowboys. But I love Tony Romo in the booth. Yeah, like, even when he's wrong, predicting like yeah. the next play that's gonna yeah, happen, people it, roast him for that. Uh -huh. They're like, "Oh, Romo, not so smart, are you?" Like, yeah, he is really smart. And it, for me, it's his energy, his childlike enthusiasm. It gets me pumped. And to yeah. be able to go and walk into the booth with a dude like Jim Nance, go Cougs, U of H. Um, Jim Nance, one of the biggest egos you will ever find in broadcasting. And to, I mean, the dude has a multi-million dollar painting of himself in his living room. Okay, <laughs> I would love to be Jim Nance. He's got he's got the, a replica hole of one of Augusta's holes uh, on his property. Like, and if you watch Peyton's places, him and Tom Brady go play this hole. It's 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 
it's on his property, like right next to his house. It's like this. Of course he does. Par three, like 140 yard par three, like right there. It's it's amazing. Uh, I would love to be Jim Nance for all the golf tournaments. I just that would be rad for me. Hello, friends. People freak out that I'm like a. I love golf. I love playing it. I'm not sitting here watching it, you know, on TV. And the I won't watch the random tournaments. Like, there's I forgot. I don't even know the tournaments playing. All this kinds weekend. of tournaments. Yeah, but I, I, the big tournaments I will watch, man. Like, and then of course my favorite athlete of all time, Tiger Woods, is on. I mean, by the way, somebody get me in touch with Tiger. To be that that'll be the pinnacle of my. Career. Oh yeah. If you don't like me, if you hate me, and you're listening to this. I will quit after I talk to Tiger Woods. <laughs> like, I don't. How can anybody hate you? <laughs> I'm kidding. Like I wouldn't quit, but I mean Tiger Woods would be that. That's who I want to chat with one day. But back Gotta to make that happen. Yeah, I know. Get to Radio uh, Row or something. You know, maybe. Joe Joe Applewhite. By uh, by the way, a, a good friend of mine in his phone because we talk all the time. He's always in the grocery store. I, he has me. <laughs> sa- he sa- he has me saved under Tiger Woods. So when I call and he's in public, it says Tiger Woods, and people are like, <gasps> they're like what? <laughs> And he's like, hey, what's going on? And people are like, oh, my God, are you talking to Tiger This is the man (laughs) in business meetings. Like, oh, hang on, guys. Tiger Woods calling. Like, hang on. He said that's happened. He's had his phone on the table. You know, uh, he's he's been in big big meetings. and He's had his phone on the table. It says Tiger Woods. He's like, oh, I'll get that later. And everybody's like, what? You just just put Tiger on hold? (laughs) So uh, it's pretty funny. Tiger Woods, I can't wait to meet him. All right. In other coaching news, I I put this on uh, social media last night. I know it's not 100% confirmed, but my sources tell me. Byron Leftwich are, is heading to the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I love your response already. I I was actually more so <laughs> laughing at you said my sources can confirm. I just had a whole conversation uh, with somebody about this yesterday about sources, and uh, it's yeah. a whole thing. But, uh, yeah, no, that's uh, – you know what? It's a feel-good story, good for them. Sure. Does it make me feel any more confident in their ability to win a championship? Not so much, but right now – Kind of like what I think the Texans try to do, like with David Coley, right? Or uh, what the Astros did with Dusty Baker. Like, you go through a really, really rough patch as a franchise, PR-wise, and you need that good, yes. feel-good dude to come in and and right the ship. And um, so that's what they're doing right now, I feel like, is damage control. Plus, he's a dude, you know, he can totally get on board with whatever the vision for the culture is supposed to be and have more of an emotional investment in it. Because didn't he used to be a Jaguar? Yes. Yeah, he was a quarterback for Jaguar. the Jaguar. Jaguar, yeah. Jaguar. I mean, this is almost like you said, like bringing in the Cam Newton for Carolina. Um, except, yeah. you know, this is head coaching. and uh, He could be good, though. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, look, he's a quarterback, and he's a good offensive coordinator. Uh, well, I guess good enough. And ben this is good for the city. Tom look, Brady. If you're trying to – if this is a business, right, and you're in Jacksonville, this is your hire. This is yep. perfect. You're, this is going to bring fans in, and you've got to groom this young, this young kid in Trevor Lawrence – how to play professional football and Byron Leftwich has been in the game for a very long time. I, I think he'll this buys Trevor Lawrence two to three more years, I think. What do you mean buys it for him? Uh, because if I mean if he went next year and performed like he did this year, uh, I, you know, he'd be on the, the Sam Darnold route or something. You think so? Oh, the route uh, you, Okay, sorry, I just need a little clarity. Like you're saying like with the franchise itself, he would be like on the hot seat? Or yeah. are you saying, like, public perception, like, oh, this kid's a bust? Yeah, well, both. I, I, I both? think that if he went out next year, you know, you always have a, a really big y- – look, you can't – it's very hard to come in as a rookie and just be explosive. Uh, Peyton Manning broke the in- interception record his first year. Uh, <laughs> Troy Aikman did uh, – I think Troy Aikman threw, like, 15 his first year. Your sophomore year is a big, big leap that because yeah. you, you got off season, you practice, and he's gonna have like he's got to make a giant step in his second year now in Jacksonville, and I think Byron Leftwich can help him with that. And this also brings in people that want to stay in Jacksonville. They're like, oh, okay, well maybe Byron Leftwich is here, maybe he's got something brewing. I think players will like him. You they know, were, it might give him more incentive to either resign with the Jags or yeah, maybe a free agent want to come play with the young quarterback. They were wearing what clown suits to the last game. <laughs> Right? Yeah, I don't think that's Trevor Lawrence, though. I think a lot no. of people feel like Trevor Lawrence was just put into a really terrible situation with a coach like Urban Meyer. Ugh. I thought it was a good coaching hire at the time, but, you know, I don't know the guy, so how could I possibly know? Turns out he's like Sean Payton. He's <laughs> way <laughs> I mean, worse. I, I'm, I'm way worse. That was, a, that was a low blow. I'm sorry, Sean. Because uh, that was going to come up later. I know it. Uh, I, I just... You look, I mean, Urban Meyer liked to dance. He liked to have a good time. He was loud. He, he, he wasn't a player's coach, obviously. This is a complete culture change for them, mm-hmm. 100%. And, uh, They'll have it, more fun coming to work every day. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I, I think. I, you know, I, if it gives Trevor Lawrence some, some built-in confidence and they've got a decent defense, they've got a decent running back in James Robinson, uh, they could have a little bit of success this year. 
They could. Uh, let me ask you a dumb question here. Byron Leftwich, I remember him mostly as a stealer. Was he a backup to Ben Roethlisberger? Was he an offensive coordinator for the Steelers, or he was, was he backup. both? He was a backup to Ben. Then he played. Uh, ben I remember got, ben watching got hurt. him play. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then uh, he stepped in for a, a few games with for Ben over the course of I don't know three years. I think he was with them, mm-hmm. and then uh, he moved to Tampa Bay as the offensive coordinator. Obviously, for the last three years, I think he's been there. And then now, obviously, Jacksonville Jaguars head coach. But okay. uh, he's definitely gone through the ranks. And, look, he's been with great organizations. And we're now going to see if he knows how to uh, – being a head coach and being a, an offensive coordinator for Tom Brady is completely different. Yeah. 100% we, completely different. We know that, Bill O'Brien. <laughs> yeah. I, look, uh, Tom Brady calls the plays for Tampa Bay. Uh, uh, they even said that last year. You know, Tom calls all his own plays. So we'll see, uh, but uh, again, for the culture of that team and trying to get fans back into a town in Jacksonville that's notoriously a college town, and you're trying to fill seats in an NFL stadium, great hire for them. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with it, and honestly, I don't know how many other choices they really had. You know, Well, I guess Trevor Lawrence is kind of the what draws you in but yeah. I, does it actually make you want to coach there i don't know nobody's really truly been successful there outside of tom coughlin all I right like. man let's have some fun now with let's this nfl it. uh we'll bring up antonio brown again man this guy i i, I swear him and rogers just oh, love Lord. the camera and the news now it's coming out well <laughs> this is what he says he says that the tampa bay buccaneers offered him two hundred thousand dollars to go to what he calls a, a, a psych ward <laughs> okay, first of all, that's got to be a gross <laughs> exaggeration, which, who, yeah. sho- shocker, in uh, Mental Brown. health treatment is, is what it actually is. It, that's uh, what everybody thinks. Everybody keeps blaming Vontez Perfect for yeah, this man's mental issues. Brutal. Like, I, I'm convinced he's just an asshole, but, uh, you know, maybe, maybe there's something, maybe he needs to be medicated. Like, they probably said, hey, go see a psychiatrist. We'll pay for it and we'll give you $200,000 to do it. He went on. Can somebody give me two hundred thousand dollars. I'll go see a psychiatrist. He went on the Bryant Gumble show, and everybody knows Bryant Gumble. I think people know Bryant Gumble more for uh, uh, what's that movie? Show me the money. Um, Mark McGuire. Mark. Uh, no. Is that not what it's called? No, that's. It's Mark not McGuire. called Mark McGuire. He he, <laughs> he played for the <laughs> Oakland A's steroid user. <laughs> Moneyball. No. Damn. I can't remember. I forget. Anyways, it's a Tom Cruise movie. Yeah. Uh, and so, anyways, Bryant Gumbel and Antonio Brown had a had an interview where Antonio Brown now literally thinks it, it, like he he is disputing everything that Andy Reid said. Andy Reid. I mean, not Andy Reid. My bad. Sorry. That uh, uh, Bruce Arians. Bruce Arians said like on the sideline. I mean, disputing it all, and even the the halftime locker room talk, even what Tom Brady says, and now he says that they offered him two hundred thousand dollars to go to a Mental health treatment center, Antonio Brown. Maybe he does, dude. I don't know. The name, the title probably sounds much more dramatically worse than what it really is. They probably just wanted him to go get evaluated for, like, mental things. That could have involved a psychiatrist and a CAT scan of, CAT scan of your brain. Whatever. But, like, it, it's – it's I, I don't blame them for thinking this guy has mental issues because – Look at the positions that he's been put in. You have the GOAT, the GOAT of all GOATs, Tom Brady, putting his name on the line for you, taking you into his home, reinvigorating your career. You are a laughingstock and a joke, and you're throwing uh, sex toy gummy bears at reporters and, and well, then he t- after the, making after, rap songs. After Tampa Bay lost, then he throws out a tweet. With him, with yeah. it, you know, with him holding up a sign saying they lost, and the actual with him with his shirt off running off the field, like, come on, dude, you're not gonna win any sort of lawsuit doing that. By the way, it is Jerry Maguire, not Mark McGuire. Jerry Maguire. <laughs> Why did I say Maguire? <laughs> well, dude, I had a, I mean, I literally an had idiot. a brain lapse, and then I was thinking about that, and I said uh, uh, Andy Reid because it was still stuck in my head. Like, what is it? I can't believe I forgot the name of that movie. But yeah, yeah. Jerry Maguire. Uh, yeah, Brian Gumble. Go if you're looking for sheer comedy, just absolute ridiculousness. <laughs> Go watch the, this Bryant Gumble interview with Antonio Brown. And there's no telling how much money that – anyway, he's suing Tampa Bay. And he has to because everyone else is suing him because yeah. he doesn't pay his bills. This guy. Ever. And, and then him, him tweeting out that he wants to go join Lamar Jackson. Look, if you're in the same division as the Ravens, Cleveland, Cincinnati – Yes, you. In fact, force him to go. Like you want that because he single-handedly, he's the Carmelo Anthony of the NFL, <laughs> except way, way more controversial. Yeah, he's, he's um, a massive cancer. Do you think he's already got a. Okay, take the attitude out of out of the out of the uh, the equation here. 
just his career right now, Antonio Brown, Hall of Fame? No. And you know why? If what we talked about at the very beginning of the show. But this is a different, his different attitude. league. But I'm yeah, pretty sure Terrell on, Owens is not in. So if he's well, not Tio, in. Yeah, Tio's not in. So how would you put Antonio Brown right. up, above him? Um, yeah, I mean. <laughs> this. But, but I'm saying without that, just stats alone and performance on the field, do you personally think that he would have uh, had a hall, he would be Hall of Fame right now? What's he got? Two, three rings now? I, I think a he lot. has. Uh, no, maybe only has one with Pittsburgh and he has one with uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, uh, I don't know. He's either got two or three. But. Uh, no, I, I don't think Antonio Brown would be a Hall of Famer. I think um, he's been to three. Because I know. He's probably been. I know Ben Roethlisberger lost one. He won two, lost one. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. So I'm thinking that Big Ben won one with him, and then he won one in Tampa Bay last year. Yeah. But, you know, look, again, they, please go to Baltimore just just so us here at Sports with Balls will have great content for all, the whole season next year. Please. Yeah, like, no. Pl- stay in stay the NFL. In the league. <laughs> yes, stay in the league. Stay. I'm not ready to lose you yet. Um, not until I find out who the next you is going to be because yeah. I feel like every generation kind of, you know, when I was younger, it was Terrell Owens. Now it's A.B., who, in my opinion, is way worse than Terrell Owens. Terrell and, Owens uh, is a crybaby. He was just a crybaby. He was vocal. He loved the camera. I wish that during his career he had sit-ups in yeah. his front lawn. <laughs> I just wish that during his career that social media was a thing or, like, cell phones and, and cameras were, like, a thing. They oh, really yeah. weren't. But imagine the content we would have had to look back on. It would have been fantastic. But right, I, I need up? to know who the next A.B. is before we replace him. Yeah, I 100% agree. But Lamar Jackson wants him. Did you see? He retweeted his tweet yeah, with a devil face. Harbaugh's not an idiot. That ain't happening. No, and they, they <laughs> never go out and get big-name free agent <laughs> wide receivers. They never do. Uh-uh. They don't do that. So I'm All they... right, let's get to what everybody is here to listen to, and that's Rachel Von Aranger talking about this weekend's games. Uh, championship weekend. Bengals at the Chiefs, 49ers at the Rams. Let's go. Let's start off with this Bengals and Chiefs game, which I think it will be I, – I, well, I don't want to say it. I, I, I don't know what to think about this game. It's the early game. It's 2 p.m. CBS. Uh, the line is Kansas City minus 7 still, which is shocking me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the over-under is at 54. What, what are your thoughts on this game? <laughs> I don't know. For me, this game is harder to uh, theoretically handicap than, than the next one. Um, I'm, I'm fading the Chief. I mean, I'm fading the Bengals all day whenever it just comes down to money line. Like, I don't think there's a chance in hell that the Bengals win this game. The Titans, just watching them against the Titans, they shouldn't have won that game. No. Ryan Tannehill is trash, yes. and I'm no longer a believer. And, uh, the, you know, the Titans had no business losing that game. You sack his – the problem – look, Joe Burrow is great. And would I love to see this amazing story if he were to somehow beat the Chiefs and and they go on to the Super Bowl? That'd be fantastic. Wow, the storyline surrounding that 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 narrative. But with that being said, they are not ready. This is not their time yet, and I'm just not on board with it. This is not this is not his moment. You're almost there, young man. Next year, maybe the year after that, totally I would put money on maybe you winning. But your offensive yeah. line is horrendous, and I believe that championship games are won in the trenches. You have no protection. I know that the Chiefs' defense isn't anything to write home about. It's not anything terrifying or anything like that. But I do believe that uh, Pat Mahomes will have much more time to do what he needs to do than Joe Burrow will. And because of that. Yeah, and he, the, Mahomes just dismantled the number one defense in the league, uh, points per game wise. The Buffalo Bills were the number one defense in all of the NFL, and Patrick Mahomes just destroyed them. We saw that. Pat Mahomes, this is crazy right here. Pat Mahomes had more yards passing after the two-minute warning than Jimmy G averages in the playoffs. That's not surprising oh to me at goodness, all. Dude. Jimmy G, don't, he don't need to be here either. <laughs> Maybe well, less than gonna, the Bengals. We're going to talk about that in a second. But Joe Burrow, I, I, I 100% agree with you, and I wish I could argue that it's not their time yet. They did not play a, sp- a spectacular offensive game nope. in Tennessee at all. Uh, they barely squeaked by that game. Yep. And I, I – Kansas City right now is healthy, and they're yep. hot. And uh, they drafted one of the top centers. I, I think he's ranked number three in the rookies. Like their center now is unbelievable, and their offensive line, to what you're saying, wow. is on point, and they're healthy. And look, they they could have they, they almost won another Super Bowl last year, right? With a really really beat up offensive line, and it injured Pat Mahomes. Like yeah, it's it not injured. the same this year. Dude, they look. 
if it wasn't for Josh Allen, then we wouldn't be even having this conversation. You know, like Josh Allen put up a fight against Pat Mahomes that was unbelievable. And I just don't think that Joe Burrow and, and them are there yet. I don't. I don't think they're ready. Uh, now, coming up to watch Burrow, Allen, and, and Mahomes go at it is going to be fantastic for the next few years. But I agree with you. I might even I, – I think I would eat the seven all day long on this. Like you'd take the Bengals to cover? No, I, I take Chiefs minus. I would take. Oh. I would take Chiefs almost minus ten in this game. I, I, I don't. The over under scares me at fifty four um, because I think that if they get an early lead and they're stopping, if they're stopping Joe Burrow, uh, I see. Ty, you, you know, I'm gonna hold off for a second because I want to know the health. Like if Tyron Matthews is gonna play, he's a big part of that that defense behind there. And in it's fact, a coach on the field. I, I don't think that. I don't think that. And, and Tyron Matthews knows uh, uh, Joe Burrow very well from LSU, but their offense and defense. But I think that I don't That's think a great nugget. I didn't even think about I don't the familiarity that, there. Well, yeah, and I don't think Josh Allen would have made those throws that one defender just got his ankles broken. If Tyron Matthews was back there, I don't think one of those throws happens. Really? I th- not both of them. I think one might, but I think Matthew uh, or Matthew, however you want to pronounce his name. Uh, would have broken one of those up, or the defense would have been a little different with him back there. So I, I think that I would love to see where his health is. I, I don't know. I haven't heard anything on him yet. Uh, I think the injury report came out today. I'll have to look that up. But if he's healthy, yeah, that's going to be a rough time for the Bengals. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure that the Chiefs are going to, just like every smart team should do, everybody, everybody, I don't care if you got a splinter in your finger or you got a, a sprained ankle, you are a game-time decision because I'm not – I'm, I'm the Bill Belichick mind as far as that goes with the injury reports. We don't talk about them. Eh, everybody's <laughs> got an injury right now. Everybody's a game yeah. time decision because I don't want to give you any edge on making a game plan for, you know, I want you to be caught a little bit off guard if I can catch you off guard. You know, I'm not, I'm not doing it. But I'm more curious about the injury report in the next game. And I got to know, is Debo going to play? Because I don't yeah. think the 49ers have a chance, period. But no Debo, no chance. Oh, there's not a chance None. in hell. But he already said that he's good to go. He said that today. George Kittle's good to go. Um, I think the one uh, – they had one question mark, and I forgot who it was. It came out a little bit ago. Um, let me see if I can find it. But I don't know. Sean McVay, though, versus the 49ers, 3-7. and seven. Don't care. Oof, man. I, I oh, Man, I have a rough game with this 49 – or a rough time with this 49ers-Rams game. Like a really rough time. I don't know where – which way I want to go on this. There is a reason that Vegas has this at only minus three and a half. You know, just like I know, and I bring it up all the time, minus three at home regardless. So they're saying that this is a half a point game? Yeah. That is stupid. These spreads should be flipped. This should be minus seven in favor of the Rams. In the other game, I could see more being like a, a plus three and a half for the Bengals as underdogs. Like these spreads need to be flipped. I am telling you, I'm telling you. That unless the bus crashes and goes off of a cliff. <laughs> Don't that, throw it out there. <laughs> you know, or let's say somebody's on their hoverboard and, and Matthew Stafford, you know, breaks his ankle. The, no, this is different. And I know that there are statistics that are, I was looking at some of them earlier today, that are going with what you're saying. Um, so I actually have one written down because I, I knew you were going to I knew you were going to go here. <laughs> Wait. So teams that win twice against another team in the regular season are 14 and seven against them in the playoffs. That's so a good one. That's a good two stat. out of three times they win. There are stati- very few of them going in favor of the 49ers in this matchup. But there are statistics that'll that'll look the play here is the under on point total. But you wait, you wait, because I promise you that number is so low, and these are two dynamic offensive minds at coach and and two offenses with a lot of talent on them. The public is going to bet the over, the over, the over. And once it gets closer to game time, watch that move up to, I bet bet you you'll be able to get it at like 48 and a half, 49. Do that, and I'm taking the under. Uh, Well, so the other player I was talking about was uh, the Niners offensive tackle, Trent Williams, who is a massive part of that offensive line. Kyle Shanahan today, this was only an hour ago, expressed confidence that he will play. He's got an ankle issue, but that's the other guy I'm talking about. He is amazing, right? So, and Debo Samuel is the X factor for the 49ers. We all know Uh, it it just – it's unbelievable that a guy threw five touchdown passes over 400 yards and rushed for 80 yards – is not in the playoffs, got beat last week, 
and a guy that threw for 130 yards and two <laughs> interceptions is in the playoffs and won. And not only did he beat Green Bay in Green Bay, but the week prior was in Dallas and Jerry World and beat the Cowboys. All on the road? Oh, my God. But did he beat them? Or did did Kyle Shanahan in a good defense and a good running game and knowing – just knowing how to scheme like I, t- I say it all the time like I'm, I'm a very public like I'm obsessed with Shanahan like that is my guy that's who I really wish coached my team I'm, I'm a big fan of his father and then the Kubiak coaching tree and in the Shanahan coaching tree I love Kyle Shanahan I think he is the smartest guy in the NFL and that is the only reason I would ever even consider giving the 49ers a chance in this game you think they have the better coach they have the, in my opinion yeah that's interesting. I mean, that's a good that's a good way to go. Like, I mean, there's all kinds of different ways you can gamble, right? So you're going to take Stafford over Garoppolo. Like, yep. You know, uh, I, I think you would take Elijah Mitchell over Cam Akers at this point. He fumbled twice last week. It's, it's not I good. think that was the Tom Brady uh, shadow. <laughs> they, they all <laughs> – The Cooper, luck. Cooper yeah, Cup had had man. a fumble all season. I know. And there was at the very end, just that consecutive, like, it's errors that they thing. made. When it was 27 to 3, I know you were like, no way. <laughs> and I, Yeah, I, <laughs> people were tweeting me that. Oh, I saw it already on Facebook. People were, were uh, uh, like, adding you, and I was like, oh, my goodness. Like – because you knew that the Brady shadow, like you just said, was going to come around. It's and real. it did. It's, it's real. Did. Yes. And you I get can, scared at the end. I cannot you? believe that, that they came back and tied that game up. I was like, yeah. You got to. And it was all fumble. Like, they just mistake after mistake after Stupid, mistake. Stupid. Like, incomprehensible Ugh. mistakes. But then Matt Stafford proved all you haters wrong. And he came in at the very end of the game. I don't remember how many seconds are left. And he makes that pass to Cooper Cup. Boom. De- like, Everybody who said, like, oh, Matthew Stafford can't win a playoff game. Well, he's done that twice now. Oh, Matt, Matthew, th- he's not going to be the reason that a team wins a playoff game. But- uh, it, it was amazing that the two play calls in a row to Cooper Cup uh, and on that go route, which they called uh, you love the NFL route because you don't you, like you just run that route to clear. The, the thing was they were he was running that route to clear the safeties out. They were going to get OBJ across the middle and then go up and spike the ball. And then, you know, hopefully they get one more play in and then kick a field right. goal. It was wide. I mean, just like a bomb wide open. It was it was amazing play. Um, and like. Do you think this weekend's games, Bengals at Chiefs, 49ers at Rams, could he? Not a chance at How can you can compare to what happened last weekend? Never. No, you can't. It it was the best weekend of maybe any sport ever it of was all time. Unreal. And it's kind of like it's it can't be outdone because it's kind of like when when Pat Mahomes had that stellar year that he won it all, won the Super Bowl, and he's just going out there, no look, sidearm, slinging it, passes, and they're putting up 40, 45 points a game. I said to myself, and then he got that big contract, said to myself, he will, no matter what he does from here on out, we will always think that he has slumped a little bit. Because yeah. you just can't, you can't replicate this. It will never be redone. Uh, he, can't happen. They, they just did. And, you know, Chiefs fans, this was amazing by the Chiefs fans. This is, you think of like NFL and the fights you see all over the internet, the Cowboys and Eagles games, Chicago and Kansas City, whatever. You see fights all over it. This is amazing by the Chiefs fans. They have teamed up. The chief fans, they started a GoFundMe for uh, for Josh Allen because of his performance and what a game they gave him. They're donating to his charity, right, on this GoFundMe. They've already come up with $250,000 to the O'Shea Children's Hospital in Buffalo. Was it, didn't, didn't they last year, that's the year cool. before that? Like, way to go, Chiefs fans. Like, that's how great of a game that was. That's how great Josh Allen was in that game. And just be just because he called tails, he loses. Didn't didn't Bills fans do that for something with the Bengals last year? Something I crazy. They something knocked like somebody that. out that ended up putting the Bills in the playoffs. Yeah, and as a right. thank yeah, you, happened, yeah. all the Bills fans, they raised like half a million dollars, and then a lot of the players matched it and stuff. Yeah, so remember. this is becoming a trend, and that's really cool because there's not a whole lot of really good things that you see happening in the world like that, just frivolously for no reason, unsolicited. That's pretty cool. All right, so uh, before we get out of here, we got a few minutes left. The Rams uh, are hosting the 49ers 530 on Sunday. Right now, the Rams minus three. What's, what's, what's your take on it? Um, I love it. You love it. I love it. Rams minus three. Um, three and a half. Right money now. line is minus one eighty five. No value there. But like I said, with the point total being at forty six, yeah. I'm gonna wait. I promise you that thing's gonna get up to probably like forty eight, and I'm gonna take the under. Wow. All right. So <laughs> there's Rachel's picks for the weekend so far. Uh, man, stay tuned. We may have Rachel back tomorrow. Not exactly sure yet, but I'll let you guys know. Follow us on all of our social media sites and and all of the podcasts wherever you get your podcast, man. 
pay attention. So, a uh, quick recap. Barry Bonds and uh, Roger Clemens did not get in the Hall of Fame yesterday. If you missed any of my rants, my 20-minute <laughs> rant, <laughs> start the show over. Go find us on uh, wherever you get your podcast. Uh, it was – I don't really go on – I don't really go off on tangents, but, man, that pissed me off. My son was in my – he was in the living room, and he was like, wow, dad, dad's mad. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I could have seen – I wish I could have been a fly on the wall. Um, but I need more sports to make you mad, so I'm actually rooting for chaos <laughs> yeah, root because for I, chaos. I love mad, angry Jeff. Yeah, man, I, I, that that just that, that was aggravating, man. Uh, David Ortiz gets in with seventy seven point nine. Barry Bonds missed at sixty six. Roger Clemens was sixty five point two. Kurt Schilling, like you mentioned, down at fifty eight point six. That was his last season, uh, as well. Man, look, I want to thank everybody for. Uh, watching us paying attention to us man we will be back tomorrow night at 6 p.m man uh rachel once again thank you so much for coming on thank you for having me it's always fun with you sports with balls all right got a couple people to thank before we get out of here hybrid technologies 832-336-1201 roy stanton uh he was watching the show monday incredible on sports and even better at getting you uh reliability where you need phones cable services surveillance cameras cloud servicing this guy has it all man he's in every state so uh, wherever you are he will come hook your business up with anything that you need Construction concepts, changing corporate culture one design at a time. Hospitality, corporate, luxury, retail, and medical facilities. Their team of experts can create or update a space that exceeds your expectation. Give them a call, 713-589-2682. And Fitz Roofing, mentioned you earlier, did my roof. Badass, amazing. And Brian White, attorney Brian White, 713-500-5000. And, of course, where we're at every Wednesday and Thursday, Christian's tailgate. I'm gonna get me some food and maybe a drink. Smells good. I smell something right now. I had the turkey burger a little bit ago. That thing was delicious. I'm smelling garlic. Something smells. Yeah. Something I, smells good. It had my. There was the green beans I ate earlier. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Rachel, man, I appreciate you. Hopefully, we'll see you tomorrow night again. Thank all y'all for paying attention to Sports with Balls, man. I'm Jeff Michael. This is Rachel Von Von Orange. We're out of here, y'all. Peace. Cup full of oil and an orange cush sweet Cause this is how we do it in that 7-7